yes, yes, yes. How many of us would have dealt with this exchange rate this way? How many of us would have dealt with it that way? Yes. Yes, many of them. Thank you very much. Many of them. So ladies and gentlemen, if that is then the case, what I need to do is to come and reorganize, is to come and uh, capture the information this way, 1.7826 to 1.7832. How about the money or rather the currency? What currency are we looking at there? If I could go back to that screen. The currency of this exchange rate, ladies and gentlemen, they have told us up there, the currency, the currency up there, they told us the finance manager has collected the following information. You can see the spot. So they have given us the dollars there per pound. Like now they are telling us dollars here. Dollars, dollars, dollars per pound. Dollars per what year? Per pound. Dollars per pound. So these are dollars, dollars. They have written here dollars. And then up here we have uh, per what year? per pound, like that, dollars per pound. Meaning, ladies and gentlemen, that if I was to capture this, all this will be dollars per what year, like this, per pound. Will be dollars per pound, dollars per pound. Now, ladies and gentlemen, given this particular representation, could you kindly tell us between the two, which one is the buying rate and which one is the selling rate from the bank's perspective? Uh -huh. So there is somebody who is saying 1.7832 is what? Is the buy. Are there many who are able to recognize that 1.7832 is uh, the buying rate? Yes, because these are students who have been able to remember one thing, that for us to be able to remember between the two, which one is the buying rate, we need to know which currency is our home currency. This question started by telling us up there, Nedwen Company is a UK-based company, meaning that uh, this company is making a use of the pounds. The pounds are its home currency. And you can see the presentation. Where is the pound? The pound is on this other side. The pound is there. We say you should simply come and use your hand properly. So if the pound is on this other side, then this figure here becomes buy, and this one here becomes what here somebody? Becomes sell. I would want to repeat this again. If I'm given like a hundred, if I'm given like a hundred to 101, a hundred to 101 Kenya shillings per dollar, and you happen to be a Kenyan, you're given a hundred to 101 Kenyan shillings per dollar, and you happen to be a Kenyan. Between the two, which one will be the buying rate? Somebody from uh, your, or rather on your comment section, between the two, which one will, will be your buying rate? Which one will be your buying rate? A hundred. Is it many of them saying a hundred? Thank you very much. A hundred, simply because, ladies and gentlemen, you can see the expression. Where is the Kenya shilling on this side? If the expression, on the expression, the Kenya shilling is on the left-hand side, then automatically the left-hand side figure becomes the buy. And this becomes what you the sell. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I would want you to understand and understand this once and for all. We don't want to keep on repeating this. And it's a topic that we know has to come in your exams. Very, very important topic. Very, very important topic. Now, having defined the buy and the sell, what do you think will be the next step for us? What do you think will be the next step for us? Remember now you have given us the amount in the question. And then number two, you have been able to define the buy and the sell. So what do you think will be the next thing for us to do? Anyone who has an idea? Anyone who has an idea? We con Before conversion, there is a very important step you are skipping, my friend. Very, very important step you are skipping. The role of the bank. The role of the bank. You must come and define the role of the bank in this transaction. The role of the bank in this transaction. 
Now, without thinking so much, can a good student tell us what role will this bank in the UK play in this particular scenario? In this particular scenario, what role do you think will the bank play? Remember the bank in terms of foreign currency can either buy the foreign money or sell foreign money. The bank can either buy or sell foreign money. Is it many of them who are saying that the bank will be buying? Like how many, like 10? Over 10, then my students are really so good in this. I'm actually even wasting time here. Over 10, I've said that Mwalimu, in this case here, and we said in our normal classes, ladies and gentlemen, that whenever you see a receipt, a receipt, know that the bank is buying. If a company receives foreign money, the company will take this money to a bank, this foreign money to a bank, and the bank will do what they will buy. And you don't have to reason in this case at all. What you need to do, ladies and gentlemen, is to remember the general rule that for receipts, banks buy. And for payments, banks sell. For receipt, banks buy. For payments, banks do what here, sell. So this is a net receipt. It's a net receipt. And therefore, because it's a net receipt, the bank will do what here, the bank, if it's a receipt, the bank will buy, will buy. So the bank will buy at what rate? You are able to see the rate here. The bank will buy at $1.7832 per what year? Per pound. $1.7832 per, uh, per pound because you've been able to specify your buy. You've been able to specify your buy. You've been able to specify your buy. So it is after specifying uh, this particular rate that we can now do what that student up there was telling us to convert. So I want to see tonight whether there is any student who can convert this without really hustling the way you guys are hustled to attend this class. Too bad. Too bad. Too bad. But you shall overcome. You've come a long way. And to see whether there is anybody who will be able to convert this very fast and give us an answer. We shall be able to convert very fast and give us an answer. I can see Marion over there. So Marion, we expect you to give us an answer. Is there somebody who has given us an answer? Eight. So in this case here, we exchange. And on exchange, I'm being given 800 and what here, 56? 850, huh? Oh, eight is not there. Eight is not there. 56, 079 cows, pounds, pounds. How many of them are getting this? All of them. All of them. Again, yeah. Okay, okay. Great. So come straight away, ladies and gentlemen, here, and we try to do the conversions all of us, all of us, so that uh, if there is any new student, they should be able to see what we, are, we did to get this figure, to get this figure. It's quite easy, ladies and gentlemen. We have here one from this expression, from this expression, from this expression, we can see $1.7832 equals one pound, equals one pound. How about our net receipt, which we want to hedge, which is 100,000 what year? Dollars, how many pounds do we have there? So from there now you need to go ahead and do what year? And then you cross multiply. So if you cross multiply, you'll end up getting $100,000 times one pound divided by what year? 1.7832 dollars of which dollars and dollars they will cancel out giving us if you take your calculator there if you take your calculator there ladies and gentlemen you'll be able to see a very beautiful figure we have a uh, hundred thousand a hundred thousand times one divided by 1.7832 
which will give us 56, 56, 0, 078, 0, 0.96. Of course, I can see the dollars here canceling out, giving us what here? Pounds like that, giving us pounds. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for having gotten that correct. If you allow me, I'll want to test you great people how good you are in terms of uh, money market. And I want us to do a money market table for this one month. A money market table for one month, and I'm going to count for you three minutes. Three minutes. Money market table, a money market table for this one month, and you do it within three minutes. We see. I'm counting. I'm counting. Within three minutes. For those students who are very, very new, we have to organize some extra class, which we shall utilize to do this, this concept. They are quite good. You can see how good these other people have been with us for so long, how good they are. I mean, just mention a figure like this, they already are with it. They have the concept straight away. There is this sandwich which you sent to me. So we are doing money markets for one month. If I was to hedge one month, if I was to hedge one month, at the end of the day, how much will I receive? Remember the amount is 100,000. The net receipt, the net receipt. So two things that I expect my good students have done. Number one, I hope they have written the proper money market rule which is applicable. I hope they have written the proper money market rule which is applicable. And then number two, after writing the proper money market tool, which is applicable, I want to imagine that they have drawn a table for us. They have drawn a table for us. They have drawn a table for us. So as you guys finish, could you kindly first of all tell us which money market rule will apply here, somebody? Will apply here for the, sake of, uh, for the case of one month? Which money market rule will apply? Which money markets rule will apply? Which money markets rule will apply? Ladies and gentlemen, this is a receipt. Remember for money markets. For money markets, I'm repeating and repeating this severally. We have got two rules here. We have the foreign boyfriend one. And then number two, we have what we call foreign payment. You borrow local. For the new students, you can write there. FRBF stands for foreign receipt, borrow foreign. Boring, foreign receipt, borrow foreign. Foreign receipt, borrow foreign. And then we have foreign payment. You borrow local. For the one month that we have just dealt with up there, ladies and gentlemen, we have a net receipt of 100,000. And that is, if that is the case, then I will be using rule number one. Is there somebody who said FRBF? FRBF. Several, FRBF. So in this case here, the rule, the rule which you're going to apply in this question is foreign receipt, borrow, for it because we expect to receive a net of $100,000. Having discovered that this is the rule that will be applied to my good students, what I need to do is to come and draw a table. So draw a table. You just have a, you come here and draw a table nicely like this. So, of course, one of these legs has uh, always said, uh, the first one must always be borrow. This other one here will be what here, somebody? Invest. Invest or do what here, somebody? Land. Invest or land. Invest or land. And you are the ones who have uh, told us that we use this rule of FRBF. So, we are borrowing a foreign. So, borrow foreign. You borrow foreign. 
you borrow foreign. Now, ladies and gentlemen, remember here, remember here, we have got two currencies. We have the dollar, and then we have the UK, what year? Pound. So between the two currencies, which currency, somebody very fast in your comments there, which currency happens to be foreign? 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 The dollar, because this examiner started by telling us that uh, this company is based in the UK. So UK people over there use the pound. So to them, if you give them these two currencies, it is a dollar, which will be what? It's the dollar that will be foreign, you're right. So basically you are telling us to borrow foreign, which is what here? The dollar. You borrow foreign, which is the dollar. And then of course you shall come here and convert. You convert it straight out to your home currency. Now you'll be investing what we call the UK what here? The UK sterling jack or sterling pound like that. Now my great students, having discovered here that we are going to borrow the dollars. We're going to borrow the dollars. Is there somebody who is able to see from that question, from that question, is there somebody who is able to see the rate of borrowing of dollars? Let's go back to the question. The rate of borrowing the dollars. What do we have there? The rate of borrowing the dollars. The rate of borrowing the dollars. So the rate of borrowing the dollars, the rate of borrowing the dollars. They have given us many rates there. I can see one year sterling interest rate. I don't want interest rate of sterling. I want the one year dollar interest rate. And for the dollar interest rate, I can see some borrowing there and I can see some deposit. Remember dollars, what are we doing with dollars? We are borrowing. So dollars, we are borrowing. And what is the percentage there? 5.4%. So we have here 5.4%. But remember, 5.4% is an annual figure. And us, if our memories are okay, we would want to hedge a net receipt, which we expect in how many months time from now? One month. So meaning that eh, this annual figure of 5.4% has to be prorated has to be prorated. So how do you prorate this? We'll come and multiply it with one over what year? One over 12. Multiply it with one over 12. And then you say plus one there, plus one there, plus one. Why are we adding this one? Because of compounding. Remember what your primary school teacher taught you. Your primary school teacher told you that amount should be equal to principal into one plus R raised to something. I'm interested in this compounding one. So this one is for compounding purposes. So now come and give us uh, these parameters. Give us these parameters, ladies and gentlemen. What do we have here? So you take your calculator, you say 5.4% is the same as saying divided by 100. So we have here 5.4 divided by 100, although there is a shortcut there, divided by the 12, this same as times one over 12, plus one, plus one. What figure are we getting? Is there somebody who is able to get 1.0045? Is there somebody who is able to get 1.0045? They're getting something different? Irene, yes. Irene has gotten this figure. Justin, yes. Anthony, yes, thank you very much. Now from ladies and gentlemen, I will come and look at the other side of the coin. The other side of the coin, we have here lending the what here, the pound. So lending the pound, I would want you to calculate this for me. Lending the pound, calculate this for me, this parameter here for me. Tell me you are getting 1.0 what? Give me a figure to write here, somebody. Give me a figure to write here, somebody. 1.0? 1 1.033. 1 is it coming from many? 33? 
three. Is it, is it coming from many students or just one? Several, eh? Mary, Otindo, Emmanuel, Emma. Thank you very much. Those students have been able to recognize that. Eh? If you take me back to my question there, they have been able, ladies and gentlemen, to recognize the fact that for the sterling pound, I can see a borrowing rate of 4.9% and I can see a depositing rate of 4.6%. 4 4 of course, for the uh, pound here, would want, ladies and gentlemen, to do what? To deposit. Again, for one month out of 12, plus one, plus one. So what figures do we have here, somebody? What figures do we have there, somebody? So we have here 4.6 divided by 12, divided by 12. Aha, uh -huh, plus one. Yes, I'm able to get to 1.00, not, not 1.0, two zeros in between here. Is that okay? Let's check again. Should be two zeros in between there. We just got 1.038. Please repeat again and assure me that uh, you guys are getting here 1.0033. 1.0033. Is it 1.0033 or 1.03? I'm waiting for a response because that is quite important. You lose out on that, you'll end up getting a zero. Mm -hmm. Look at their comments. What are they saying? Is this one supposed to be 1.00338? This same figure here, zero, 00. Okay, thank you very much. Now, question, yes. Munyao, yes. How and is it 4.9? We took 4.6. If you look at the one year sterling uh, interest rate, borrowing is the one that is 4.9. Depositing, which is the same as lending, is 4.6. And we are drawing our wisdom from where? From this side, where we have said that the pound will be lend. So pound, we are lending the pound. Lending is the same as just taking this money to a bank and then you deposit it take it to the bank, and then you deposit it at 4.6%. 4.6%. And then, of course, you have to prorate uh, the figure plus one. So have we answered uh, Mnyao's question, really? Now, ladies and gentlemen, having done that, I would want us to come back here and tell us which exchange rate are we going to use up there? Is it the spot rate or the forward, one month forward? Which exchange rate are we going to use there? Which exchange rate are we going to use there? Is it one month forward or the spot exchange rate? Spot rate. Because money markets always makes use of what here, the spot. That is why you're going to money markets to borrow today and you do the exchange today. So ladies and gentlemen, here we are saying that uh, we shall use the spot. So convert at spot, convert at spot. So go ahead and give me the spot rate. Go ahead and give me the spot. Go ahead and give me the spot rate. So if I could go back to the question there, if I could go back to the question, if I could go back to the question, I'm able to see my spot. I'm able to see my spot. My spot has been given in a bad way. My spot has been given there in a bad way, but that really will not even scare me at all. My spot has been given us 1.78, 1.7820, 1.78, 1.7820, 1.7820, 1.7820. Plus or minus, plus or minus 0, 0.0002, like that. So when they give me this figure plus or minus, what I need to do, ladies and gentlemen, is to come and get the lower rate and the upper rate. Get the lower rate and the upper rate. So lower rate, what do we have here for the lower rate? Lower rate. To get the lower rate, we shall subtract. To get the lower rate, we shall subtract. So could you kindly subtract for us? Take this 1.7820, you subtract 0 0.0002. What figures do they have, somebody there? Check for me, what figure do they have there? 1.78, is it 18? Lower rate. 
the second one is supposed to be 1.78 to 2, isn't it? So in that case, we are writing our rate like this. In that case, we are writing our exchange rate like this. We are writing it as 1.7818 all the way to 1.782222. We have here dollars, dollars per what year? Per pound. But now you see the question is this. We cannot, ladies and gentlemen, take the two figures here. We can only work with one figure. And for us to know which figure between the two we shall work with, we must first of all define the buying rate. Very, very important whenever you have a low and an upper figure, exchange rate like this, you must tell us between the two, which one is the buying rate. Without much ado, ladies and gentlemen, I'll be able to show you that eh, the pound is on the other side. The home currency is on this other side. So we have this being what here, the buy. And then we have this being the what here, the sell. So now the question is, am I going to put the buying rate here or the selling rate here? Which rate should I put here, ladies and gentlemen? Buying or selling? Which rate should I put there? Buying or selling? Buying, yes. Because this is a money market question. And for money market question, we know the rule. We know it's a foreign boyfriend. In this case, here buys dinner. A foreign boyfriend buys dinner. So in this particular case, because the question is a receipts question, we're expecting we as a company, we as Nedwen, we expect to receive. And because we expect to receive, we shall get the money and take this money to a bank. And therefore, the bank will be buying from us. Anytime you see a receipt, don't even go to reason anything at all. Whenever you see a receipt, simply think that, uh, I mean, a receipt works with what here? Buying. So here we are making use of buying here, which is 1.78 to 2 like that. Dollars per what? Dollars per pound. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment you hit there, now you need to come and uh, place the money in the question under what here? Under the table. Under the table. So the money in the question under the table, please do that for us. Do that for us. Hello? Jambo? There are, some, there are some students who are not able to see the board. Are you able to see the board from wherever you are? Are you able to see my board? Yeah, clear. Okay, fine, fine. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay, 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 great. There's something no. Uh, no. How many of them? Very fine. There are only, there are only two, eh? Clearly. Uh -huh. I, I think this thing is all about uh, your internet service provider. Because I'm also, you can see I'm also following the class here on my Zoom, and I'm able to see the board very, very well. I'm able to see the board very, very well. Because if you try to disturb that focus again, I'm so sure we will, it will be worse. It will, <laughs> it will be bad for every, it will be very bad. So I don't know. Uh -huh. So from there, ladies and gentlemen, so come and give us, come and give us, come and give us, Straight away, give us the money in the question. The money in the question, what do we have, ladies and gentlemen? The money in the question, remember, we had 100,000 what year? US dollars. 100,000 US dollars receivable. So where do we put the 100,000 US dollars? We can't put 100,000 US dollars in pounds. 
No, we can only put 100,000 US dollars in the, the foot of dollars. So come and put these 100,000 here, put the $100,000 there. From there, you walk from this area like that, all the way up to here, all the way up to here. So remember when you are moving up, you even crumb. Up, you divide. Down, you multiply. Up, you divide. Down, you multiply. Of course, horizontally, you use logic. Horizontally, you use logic. So in this case here, up. Up, you are moving from future to present. So you divide. So we have here 100,000 divided by 1.0045, which will end up giving us 99, 99, 552, 99, 552, 99, 552.0. No, we don't need points here in money markets. Remember, these are what here still dollars. Now, ladies and gentlemen, from here, horizontally, now here we have to use logic. And the logic here is quite simple because there is no way we can multiply a dollar and a dollar. If you try multiplying a dollar and a dollar, you'll end up getting a dollar squared answer, which will be wrong. That one, if you get a dollar squared, even Trump himself will slap you. It's not possible. The only way out here is to take this figure, you divide it by this dollar. So the dollars will cancel out, and then you're left with what here with the pound with the pound. So whenever you see some commonness in terms of currency and they need you to kind of do a conversion, common currencies can never be multiplied. You can only divide to be able to get your so we have here 995 52 divided this by 1.7822, giving us, ladies and gentlemen, 50. 55, of course, running off error as I expected, 55, 55, 859, 859 what year? Pounds, 859 pounds. And then from there, ladies and gentlemen, now you can come down, down, because you're going to the future, you expect to get a bigger value, so you multiply. So we have here 55 times 1.00338 which at the end of the day gives us a money market receivable of 56,048 pounds, like that. So this is the money market figure that we expect to do what year to receive the money market's figure receivable, money market's figure receivable. Now, ladies and gentlemen, that takes me straight away. I would not want to do the one of three, the one of three months, both for forward contract and for money markets, that is your homework, which I expect you to finish, and then you post it uh, on our WhatsApp group, if you don't mind. I simply wanted to borrow this concept to teach you what we call arbitrage. Arbitrage, 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 arbitrage. Specifically called international, international arbitrage. International arbitrage. International arbitrage, international arbitrage, international arbitrage. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm so sure most of us must have done this kind of a business where we used to go to a Forex Bureau Exchange, for example, at Isli. Isli, those, during those good old days, not nowadays, you go to a Bureau Foreign Exchange, at uh, Isli. Buy a dollar perhaps at what year those days, used to buy them at about 90 Kenya shillings per what year per dollar. And then we used to rush very fast, rush very fast to a bureau here in town. This bureau in town here, we could fetch, for example, 93 Kenya shillings per what year per dollar. Of course, depending on the volumes that you used to buy, we could get very big savings here. And then we sell the same, making a profit of what year? of three shillings for every dollar. So when we talk of arbitrage, ladies and gentlemen, profits, you need to know that arbitrage is the process of exploiting price differentials, price differences over a particular foreign currency in different markets, in different markets, in different what year? Markets. So you can see my handout there. If you're able to see my handout here, which I've already sent to you, international, we are told, international, we are told, international 
uh, uh, Faina Abitre Jamin. This arises when an investor takes advantage, takes advantage of a difference in interest rate stroke, exchange rates in different countries or different markets so as to earn a risk-free, a risk-free return stroke profit. When you take advantage of a commodities, price differences between two different markets. For example, you buy bananas from Meru. You buy bananas from Meru and they come and they sell them. So Meru perhaps have bought a big batch here of uh, bananas here for 10,000 shillings. You come and sell the same quantity for 30,000. So in this case here, you have not gone to plant these bananas. You've not re really labored. It's your money working for you. You are taking advantage of the price differential to earn a risk-free profit. That is what we call arbitrage. For me, ladies and gentlemen, if you're writing there, what I would want you to write, which is very important for your exams, are the types of, the types of international arbitrage. The types of international arbitrage. Types of international arbitrage. Number one, we have what we call triangular. Triangular. So the first one is the triangular, the triangular shape. Triangular shape, I know you remember how it looks like triangle, has three sides. So we have the triangular arbitrage, triangular arbitrage. And then number two, we have the locational, the locational arbitrage the locational arbitrage, the locational arbitrage. And then lastly, ladies and gentlemen, we have the covered interest arbitrage. We have the covered, the covered interest, the covered interest arbitrage, the covered interest arbitrage, the covered interest arbitrage. And because of the concept of forward contract ETC that we have just seen, earlier on before we came to this, which was our cut and razor, I would want us straight away, ladies and gentlemen, to start with the third one. So mention there in your notes, covered interest, arbitrage. 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 So please take me to this particular handout to where they are talking about the last thing there, uh, last thing there, you'll be able to see the covered interest arbitrage. Covered interest, go to the last one. Yeah, almost there. Covered interest arbitrage is on your screen. Covered interest arbitrage is on, on your screen there. We are told covered interest arbitrage is a strategy in which an investor uses a forward contract. An investor makes use of what here? a forward contract to hedge against the exchange rate risk, to hedge against the exchange rate risk. If you are asked to define covered, ladies and gentlemen, interest arbitrage, just remember that under covered interest arbitrage, this person is making use of the forward contract to cover. That's why you normally call it forward contract cover. Yeah, to cover to cover his interest rate risk exposure, risk exposure, risk exposure. And for us to understand that, I've been able to do an illustration there for you. So we have an illustration, illustration, illustration. An investor asks Kenya shillings 10 million to invest for how many months? Six months. We are told there that the current spot rate of a Uganda shilling is Kenya shilling 0 0.06. So we have here 0 0.06 Kenya shillings per Uganda shilling, per Uganda shilling. So the current spot rate. So this is the spot rate. So the spot rate, we are told here that uh, the, current, the current spot rate of a Uganda, one Uganda shilling, that's what I'm saying here, per Uganda. One Uganda shilling is Kenya shillings, 0 0.06. We are told the six months forward rate 
of a Uganda shilling. So we have here, zero, uh, or rather, the forward rate. The forward rate of a Uganda shilling will be 0 0.09. Still, Kenya shillings per Uganda what? Per Uganda shilling. So I'm reading again, I'm reading again. The six months forward, it's good to be clear. It's six months forward. The six months forward is 0 0.09. Uh, uh, Kenya shillings per Uganda shilling. And the interest rate in Kenya is 15%. So interest rate, interest rate in Kenya, interest rate in Kenya is 15%, 15%. And then interest rate in UG, interest rate in Uganda is 25%. Interest rate in Uganda is quite high, 25%. 25%. So required, calculate the gains from covered interest rate arbitrage. Calculate the gains from covered interest arbitrage. What interest shall we be able to realize if we hedge this thing? So this is an examiner. Who is wishing me what year? Success, my great students. What I need to do is to recognize that we've got two countries here. Although this is not a money market question, but I need to model it out in the money markets uh, 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 model. So we have here Kenya, and then we have what here, somebody? We have Uganda. So we have here today, today, today. Today, how much? Do we have in terms of Kenya shillings? This investor has 10 million Kenya shillings. The investor today has 10 million, has 10 million Kenya shillings. The investor today has 10 million Kenya what year? Kenya shillings. Kenya shillings. Now I want you guys to exchange this straight away to Uganda shillings. You can see Uganda has a bigger interest rate. Uganda has a bigger interest rate. So I would rather convert my money to Uganda shillings and I, I, I invest this money being in Uganda, uh, in Uganda shillings. So convert this at spot. So convert at spot. I want to see whether the students will be able to convert at spot. Will be able to convert at spot. Let's see whether we have students will be able to convert at spot. Multiply or divide. Here there is no way we can multiply. Because if you try to multiply, you have Kenya shillings 
and the expression itself in this case here, these are 0 0.06 are Kenya shillings. If you try to multiply, you'll end up getting Kenya shillings squared, which will not be proper. So in this case here, we can only do what here, somebody can only divide. So please come and divide for us. When you divide for us, this will be 10 million. This will be 10 million divided by 0 0.06. So I'm able to get here, I don't know whether I'm correct, 166, 666, 667. Uganda shillings, Uganda shillings, Uganda shillings. Uganda shillings, Uganda shillings. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment I get that, what do I need to do? Now, I need very fast to invest this money. I need to invest this money. Once I invest this money, I expect to know the rate of interest. Remember now, Nimevuka Boda, Nimenda Uganda, Uganda, Wanatupatia interest rate ya pesangapi. Interest rate ya Uganda is 25%. But remember, 25% is for our whole year. So this has to be prorated. Because we are told here to invest this uh, for six months. So times six over 12. Of course, for purpose of compounding, we'll talk about what year plus one. So then this at the end of the day will give me what, ladies and gentlemen. This will give me 0 0.25 times six divided by 12 plus one plus one, which will end up giving us 1.125. So now what I need to do is to take this figure, multiply. We multiply. We multiply. Remember, this question is not per se a money market question. No. Because if it's a money market question, I would have been told that I expect to receive 10 million in a few. I would have put this money here, 10 million, for example. Here you are told that this, if we could go back to that question, we are told, we are told, in this question, we are told, that the investor, if you look at that question, very well illustration, the investor has Kenya shillings, 10 million to invest. So he has Kenya shillings, 10 million today, today. I don't know whether somebody is able to see the difference between these and the money market. You know, a money market question, you expect to receive money in the future or to make a payment in the, but now this person has 10 million shillings Today, today. So we were able to change it to Uganda shillings. Why do you change it to why do we have to change it to Uganda shillings? It's because we are eyeing the higher rate of interest in Uganda. We want to fetch more. So how do we fetch more? The compounding. So take this figure times 1.125. So times we have here 166, 666, 667 equals. I'm able to get, uh, if it were not for rounding off errors, I should have gotten here 187, 500,000, like that. What year? Uganda shillings. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment I get this particular figure, I should be able to remember very fast that even if life is very good in Uganda, me me see Uganda, I just went there to exploit an opportunity an interest rate differential between our two countries. So I went there to exploit an opportunity. So once I saw that pesa, na fast as any, fanya namna gani? Ni badilisha kujia currency ya Kenya. Nanta badilisha namna gani? So in this case, ya come and come back home here. So again, here you convert. Now remember this time round because this is a future figure. So you convert at the forward rate. You convert at the forward rate. So as this examiner given as the forward rate, oh yes, he's given as a forward rate of 0 0.0, what here somebody? Of 0 0.09 Kenya shillings per Uganda shilling, per Uganda shilling, per Uganda shilling. Now, ladies and gentlemen, how are we going to convert this? I would want to see some students converting and then they give us an answer. They give us an answer here. I want to see students converting and then they give us some answer. They give us some answer. What do we have here, somebody? We have, uh, of course, here. I can even decide to do it in my mother tongue. I love my mother tongue. If I'm doing it in my mother tongue, it will be 0 0.09 Kenya shillings equals one Uganda shilling. Equals one Uganda shilling. How about uh, this 187,500,000 
Uganda. So if you cross multiply there, you'll end up getting times 0 0.09, times 0 0.09. What figure are we able to get here? 16, 16, 875,000. 16, 875,000 what year? Kenya shillings, my good students. Kenya shillings, my good students. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not yet through. I would want at the end of the day to know how much profit this journey has given me. Did I go all that journey here to come and make a loss? To come and make a loss? I would want to know this journey has yielded how much profit for me. Now I need to come and ask myself a question. What if I decided to remain at home? What if I decided to remain at home and I invest this amount of money here locally? How much, what amount would have I received? Remember so far, you have not used the interest rate in Kenya anywhere. Now we need to come and crown and ice our cake by using this particular interest rate uh, of Kenya. What is the Kenya's interest rate, ladies and gentlemen? Kenya's interest rate, Kenya's interest rate. Kenya's interest rate, I'm not able to see it very well. Kenya's interest rate, ladies and gentlemen, is 15%. So I need to come and take this offside a little bit like this. I'll tell you why. So I want to invest this. So 15% again times 6 over 12 plus 1. 16 over 12, uh, 6 over 12 plus 1. Plus 1. So we have here 0.15 times 6 divided by 12 plus 1 will give us 1.0, will give us 1.075. And therefore my amount, my amount here of course down as usual, down as usual multiply, so times 10 million, I'm able to see ladies and gentlemen, if I go this route, if I go this route, I'll be able to get, if I stayed at home, I was able to get 10, 750,000, so please come and subtract. Whatever difference you get, is an arbitrage profit where you simply sat behind and let your money work for you, right? So you come and subtract whatever you get here will be your arbitrage. Whatever you get there will be your arbitrage profit, will be your arbitrage profit. So we have here 16, 875,000 divided by answer, which will give me quite a lot of money, 61.25 what? thousand just because of playing around with the interest rates between two countries you are able to make very serious profits you are able to make very serious profits you are able to make very serious profits is there anybody who has a question is there anybody who has a question today's class is going to be very nice have you even ever seen me putting on a tie so this is a mark of seriousness. Because this area will may be examined anyway, may be examined. And if you see what I'm trying to do, I told you not to Skype any class, eh? Yeah, I'm trying to build up some very important concept. I'm able to move from one area to areas that maybe you guys could have not imagined. Right, right. Any question over there? Not yet. So can I continue, my good students? Can I continue? Can I continue? Can I continue? Uh -huh. Yes, Ambrose is asking whether this is applicable in real sense. Yes, Ambrose, this is applicable. And that is why if you come back home here, for example, this bank called Absa which used to be called Barclays Bank of Kenya. How many branches does it have in Kenya? So many of them. If you go back to their country in the UK, you will not get as many branches in the UK of Abza or of Barclays over there. Why? Because the investors over there are putting in all their money where? In Africa. Most of their money is in Africa. And why are they doing that? They are doing that simply because they know that here, the rate of return is a high. And that is why you'll get all of them pushing for the interest rate cap to be lifted, to be lifted, simply because they want, you know, back there in UK, in the US, you can't get an interest rate of more than 6%. You cannot get. 
you can't get. You can't get. But here, you will get. So it is, yes, it is applicable. It is something that you guys need really to exploit if you can. If you can. If you can. Any other question? Yes, continue. Very good. So we are told there, repeat part from 187, 500,000. This part from 187, 500. Thousand. Thank you very much. Now, this one eighty-seven five hundred thousand. When are we receiving this money? This money we have invested it in a bank in Uganda. So this bank in Uganda has uh, called us after six months are over. Gentlemen, we signed a contract. We had a fixed deposit rate, which has been able to grow to this amount. So take your money. Once I take my money like that, of course I'm not a Ugandan. I would want to come back home here in Kenya and they use this money. So ladies and gentlemen, coming back, which rate should I use here? This is a future rate. And if it's a future rate, so I'm going to make use of a forward rate, a forward rate. And the forward rate, I hope you guys were able to see it, Munyao, the forward rate is 0.0, .0 what here? 0 0.09, 0 0.09. And that is why, if you look at this very well, we say the forward rate is 0 0.09, we have here Kenya shillings by Uganda shilling. So we came and uh, took this in form of our mother tongue. This will be 0 0.09 equals one Uganda shilling. How about 187,500 thousand Uganda shilling? So we're able to cross multiply and by cross multiplying, we're able to get this figure. And this figure, of course, now marks what here, our total amount in terms of Kenya shilling. And then we went ahead to ask ourselves a, a question. What if, what if we were to say the entire process of going to Uganda and getting back was nonsense and we remained in Kenya, invested this money in Kenya, would have had 10,750. So the excess is what we call the effortless profits. Effortless profits. Effortless profits. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you allow me, Munyao, if you allow me because of time, I would want us to go straight away to the triangular arbitrage. Triangular arbitrage, what our children call triangle shape. Triangle shape when they are very, very young. Triangle shape looks like this. Triangle shape looks like this. A triangle has got how many sides? A triangle has got uh, three sides. So when we talk of triangular arbitrage, ladies and gentlemen, know that uh, here now the investor will be playing around with uh, three currencies uh, to be able to earn what we call an arbitrage uh, profit. Three currencies. Uh, three currencies. Uh, for example, just take me there straight away to the arbitrage uh, profit. Uh, to the arbitrage profit. So arbitrage profit, arbitrage profit, arbitrage profit. Arbitrage profit, uh, triangular, triangular, that one, yes. Suppose, uh, please look at your screen. If you had printed it, look at your screen. Suppose the pound sterling is bid at dollars 1.9724 in New York, and the euro is offered at dollars 1.345 in Frankfurt. At the same time, London banks are offering the pound sterling at euros, uh, that, that's a euro, 1.4655 required, show the steps that an astute trader, astute trader is a wise person, a person who is able to take advantage of opportunities. Uh, he'll go grab the ball and make good use of it. The other people, those are not astute people. I'm back in a goal in Amnai, another goalkeeper and a piga inje. An astute person will be able, ladies and gentlemen, to take advantage, exploit, full advantage of what here, these opportunities, ladies and gentlemen. So we have three currencies there. We have three currencies there. So show the steps that an astute trader would follow to earn a riskless profit through a triangular arbitrage. Assume that the trader begins in New York with dollars what here? A million. So he has got dollars a million. So where I begin is not none of... Uh, it's not any of my business, ladies and gentlemen. Suppose the pound, I'm reading from the beginning. Suppose the pound is bid at, so we have the pound here. 
So the pound is bid at 1.9. 724, 724 per watt year per pound. Per pound like that. That's that one pound being bid for that. I like this. These were tested just the other sitting and so many students were not able to click anything. Right? Are there questions there? I can see somebody was typed quite uh... Oh, we read that. Eh? And then they, okay. <laughs> Lina, thank you very much. At least this one uh, is uh, motivating, uh, lifting the spirit. Eh? Thank you very much. So we are told here that uh, suppose the pound sterling is bid at 1.9724 in New York. And the euro is offered at 1.345. So we have here the euro, this other angle, 1.345, 1.345. So we have here, and the euro is offered at dollars. So dollars 1.345 per euro, per euro, per euro, per euro. And then lastly, we are told there that uh, and the pound sterling at land banks are offering the pound sterling at euros. Euro, you write an E and then you pull it like that. So euro, we have euro. We have euro there, euro 1.46, 1.46, 1.46, 1 1.4655 per watt year. So lastly, we are told that London banks are offering the sterling pound. So per sterling pound like that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, the moment I know that I have got three currencies here, I have the euro, I have the dollar, and then I have what here, somebody, the pound. So I know that I'm handling a triangular arbitrage, a triangular arbitrage. And if it's a triangular arbitrage, of course, there is a shorter way of trying to know where you should start from. But in most cases, we recommend trial and error. So you've been told there is a trader who has got how much here? There is a trader who has got a million shillings, or rather a million US dollars. So with a million US dollars, where in this case here should you run to? Where should you run to? How should you move around for you to be able to make an arbitrage profit? So with the dollars, with the US dollars, for instance, I can't come here. Because here there is no expression of the dollar and what here somebody, there's no expression of the dollar and any other currency. There is no dollar here. So with the dollars, I could either go to A or I go to B. It's either I go to A or I go to B. So could you kindly tell me which corner I should start with? Which corner should I start with? A or B? So in short, should I buy the pound or should I buy the euro? Most of them are saying A. Faith is the only one saying, Mualim, we start with B. Now, why are you saying A? Why are you saying A? Why should we start with A? Is it because A is the first letter of our, our alphabet? Hmm? Is that the case? Why A? And why not B? We start with a bigger rate. We start with a bigger rate. So these people are saying we start with this bigger rate. And uh, according to them, if we start with a bigger rate, we may end up getting what here? A profit. Ah, ah. But whenever you are given a chance, always start with a bigger rate. I'll go for the opposite. But because I, I don't want to disappoint you, let me go with yours. So in this case here, A, corner A, Corner A, they are telling me to start uh, with corner A. So corner A, I will buy the pound with these dollars. Buy the pound. Buy the pound. So if you are buying the pound, ladies and gentlemen, could you kindly exchange for us? Kindly exchange for us. I'm giving you a minute. 
you exchange that $1 million to pounds. I'm giving you one minute exactly. You change like that. I'm giving you one minute exactly. You change like that. Because you have told me to work with A. You told me to work with A. You have told me to work with A. You've told me to work with A. So I want you to exchange for me. Is there somebody who has an answer there? Not yet. Oh, there are six who left, eh? Five or six. So, so, ladies and gentlemen, buy the pound at corner A, I'm buying the pound. So, if I'm buying the pound at corner A, at corner A, I'm buying the pound. So, I have here dollars 1.974 equals one pound. How about 10, it's one million. How about one million dollars? How about one million dollars? That will translate to how many pounds? That will translate to how many pounds? So we have, ladies and gentlemen, here one million, one million times one divided by one point nine seven four. Which at the end of the day, thank you very much. Which at the end of the day will give us five or six, five or six. 585.6 cows. No, because I can see the dollar dollar will cancel out, leaving me with what here? The UK pounds. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I happen to be having my pounds with me. So, with these pounds, remember, I'm just trying to look at the appropriate corners here to work with. With these pounds, which currency do you think will I go ahead and buy this time around? Having those number of pounds, which currency will I be able to buy? Please talk to me tonight. Talk to me tonight. Talk to me tonight. Which currency with this number of pounds? Which currency can I go to corner B? You can see there is a connection between pounds and what here? The euro. So in short, you mentioned there now, Corner what? Corner C. So corner C, ladies and gentlemen, what is going to happen there at corner C? What's going to happen there at corner C? Corner C. Could you kindly try changing for us? So at corner C, ladies and gentlemen, what is going to happen there? Okay. At corner C, what's going to happen there? So corner C, I can see somebody there at home who has said straight away that at corner C, with the pounds there, I'll buy the euro. Thank you. We, I'll come and buy the euro. So we buy the euro. Buy the euro. Oh, this figure is 1.97. Thank you very much. So 1.9724. Thank you very much. So of course, this will change now. It will be five or five or six, nine, 97, exactly. Thank you very much. Now with this, thank you very much. With those pounds now, come and buy euros. So when I'm buying euros, ladies and gentlemen, it's not lost on me, but I have an exchange rate. When I'm buying euros there, what do I have? I have 1.4655 euros equals one pound. How about, how about five or six? How about five or six, 997 pounds? Mm -hmm. So you cross multiply. So you cross multiply, you'll end up getting what here. So the figure that you have there, five or six, the figure that you have there, times, or I can write it afresh, five or six, 
997 times 1.4655. This one here will end up giving us, ladies and gentlemen, if you cross multiply here, I'll be having 743.004. 004 what here? Euros. E. Euros like that. Euros. Euros. Now, having gotten this number of euros, what do you think are we going to do as the very last thing? Remember, we are attacking our corners. What do you think shall we do as the very last thing? Is there somebody who has a comment there? We've been able to attack corner A. We've been able to attack corner C. Now from there we go to corner what here? Corner boy. The last one now is corner boy. And the corner boy now that you have got euros, now you're going to buy back what here? The dollars, which you began with. So you buy back the dollars. You buy back the dollars. So go ahead and buy back the dollars. So buy back the dollars. So come and buy back here the dollars. So corner B, corner B, we are buying back by, by the dollars back. So what figure do we have here, my friends? So we have here dollars uh, 1.3450 equals who? Equals one euro. How about? 743.004.1, whatever, 004, 004 euros, euros. So if you cross multiply here, what are we going to get at the end of the day? It will be times 1.345, times 1.345. So if you cross multiply like that, uh, you will end up getting uh, from this corner, you'll end up getting 999, 341 watt here, dollars, dollars. Thereby giving you, remember you started with 1 million US dollars and now your US dollars have shrunk. So you have made what we call an arbitrage loss. So you come on the crown here by telling us that the loss, the loss will be 999, $341 minus 1 million, like that. Minus 1 million, like that, dollars. So minus 1 million, minus 1 million equals, I'm getting uh, negative 60, uh, 659. Negative 659. And remember, the topic is called arbitrage profit. We don't have a topic called arbitrage what? Loss. So meaning that now that you've gotten a loss at the end of it all, all these workings you've been doing here, they have been nothing. They'll not earn you any mark. They'll not earn you any mark. They'll not earn you any, any mark, any, any, any mark. So meaning that eh, I need to come and cancel this, we get started. Uh, if you have a book like mine, you can go ahead and do what? Rub. Rub everything because you've done it wrongly. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand and understand us very well. You can see here, you need 1.974 dollars to procure one pound. To procure one pound, you need more. To procure, ladies and gentlemen, one euro, you need, of course, it's quite expensive as well, but not as expensive as a pound you need 1.345 per euro. Meaning that uh, the euro is uh, weaker than what here the pound. Remember when we began, ladies and gentlemen, we were told that uh, this person has got how much here? The person had uh, 1 million US dollars. So with 1 million US dollars, he has an opportunity of either buying this pound or buying what here the, U, the euro. We are always advised for us to be able to succeed, always attack weaker currencies first. Attack weaker currencies first. And that is why we should not have gone for this stronger currency. Start by attacking the weaker currency. You can see here, we need quite more. 
dollars to buy a pound. So a pound is expensive. Here we need 1.34, quite much uh, lower than the other one. So the euro is weaker. So in this case, just start by buying uh, the euros. So buy the euros. So buy the euros. So in short, start with corner what? Start with corner B. So I would want to give you like three minutes, ladies and gentlemen, like three minutes, ladies and gentlemen, for you to be able to give us now the arbitrage profit. We see whether you will be able to derive an arbitrage profit. Let's see. Let's see. get an arbitrage profit. Fortunately, I'm able to see students really, they are on their book, they're writing great things there. They're writing great, great things. So he went a wrong way, which happened to also be very long, wasting, wasting our time. And instead of ending up with a, an arbitrage profit, we got an arbitrage loss, which really can't exist. Which really cannot exist, cannot exist. So I want to see whether there is any student who has been able to get an arbitrage profit. Is there any student who has been able to get an arbitrage profit? Seven? No. Thank you very much for trying, but that's a big no. Big no. Six sixty. Oh, no, I want you to move around. I want you to finish now. I don't want you to give me just one figure. I want you to finish the entire cycle and give me the profit. I just want to get the profit now. I also don't want to take any risk. I want to get the profit effortless, effortlessly, effortlessly. Let's see what somebody is getting. Let's see what somebody is getting as the arbitrage profit. 660,000. Different answers. Six sixty two, eh? Ah. Ah. So that 660 has to be correct. Wengi wape. Wengi ya potei sana. Wengi ya pana potea sana. Sasa angalia hapa, katika kona B, tumesema na mnagani. Katika kona B, ladies and gentlemen, here, this guy had a million US dollars to do this exercise. And he wants, he doesn't want to really go, for example, to Transoya and start doing a lot of farming, which is quite hectic. No, he doesn't want to do that. He wants to sit somewhere in a room, in a good hotel, in a good hotel, wait for his money to work for him effortlessly. So here is given two options here. It is either he buys with his dollars, pounds, or he buys with the dollars, euros. And he was saying always go for the weaker currency. So if it's weaker currency, we have corner B. So corner B, ladies and gentlemen, we are saying that this person should buy euros. So then how many euros will he buy? Of course, we'll come and talk of 1 million divided by 1.345 because there's no way dollar and dollar can ever multiply. 
you try multiplying dollar and dollar, you'll end up getting dollar squared. So come and divide here. So what do we have? We have 1 million divided by 1.345 equals, which gives us 700 what year? 43. 743. 743. 484 euros, like that. Now with euros, of course now with euros, for instance, I can't go here. Already I've used this corner. So with euros, I can only go here. Now go to corner C. Corner C, I happen to be having those euros. So go ahead and work on the other currency. So you buy the pound. You buy the pound. You buy the pound. And if I'm going to buy the pound, ladies and gentlemen here, of course, there is no way I can multiply that euro amount with this euro amount. What I need to do is to come and divide. So we have here 743, 494 pounds. You divide this by 1.4. That's corner C, sorry, yeah? So for corner C, ladies and gentlemen, we have, we have said here, yeah, buy what year? The pound. So we have the euros, yes, and these are what year euros. So if you try to multiply them for sure, you'll end up getting euros squared. So then it should be 743,494 euros. You divide by 1.4655 euros per pound. Euros per what year per pound. So if you try doing that, then divide this by 1.4. 655 equals, this will end up giving us 507. 507, 332. 332 what year? Pounds. Now with the pounds, now you can come back with this corner which has not been utilized. So you mentioned there corner A. Mentioned there corner A. So at corner A, what are we doing there? At corner A, ladies and gentlemen, at corner A, ladies and gentlemen, at corner A, ladies and gentlemen, I will go and buy back the dollars. So you buy the dollars. You buy the dollars. So buy the dollars, ladies and gentlemen. I can see the exchange rate. The exchange rate is 1.9724. But it's, it's supposed to be 24. 24 dollars equals one pound. Equals one pound. And therefore, ladies and gentlemen, how about uh, this 507? How about the 507, 332 pounds. So if you cross multiply there, whatever you have there times 1.9724, what are we going to get at the end of the day? I'm getting 1,661,000. 1, 1, and remember we began with what here? With a million. We began with a million dollars. So when you, divide, or you subtract, I mean, you end up getting 660 or 600 what year? 61. Being what year? The arbitrage? Profit. Being the arbitrage? Profit. Being the arbitrage? Profit. Being the arbitrage? Profit. So any question, my great students, who has a question for me? Yes. Six. six. Okay, or like 10 left. Any question for Mualimu here? So if you allow me, I'll go straight away to the last one called the locational. Location of the third one is called the locational arbitrage. Locational arbitrage is quite different from triangular. In what context? In the context of the currencies being involved. And the locational, we only consider how many currencies? Two. I'm repeating again. Locational, we consider how many currencies? Two currencies. Two currencies. Triangle, triangular, we consider how many currencies? Three. Three currencies. So if you're asked to differentiate between the two, please don't forget that uh, under locational, we have got uh, two currencies, which this astute trader will use to exploit price D differentials. So ladies and gentlemen, please, we go to our screen there. We go to locational. There is a big table given there. Consider two Forex bureaus, X and Y, with the following characteristics. You can see we have only two currencies, Kenya shilling to Tanzania shilling. So required, Determine the gain that will be realized by a Kenyan investor 
with Kenya shilling 300,000, 300 million using locational arbitrage model. Using locational arbitrage model. So we have got two bureaus. We have got two bureaus here. Never ever try to use those terminologies being given their bid, whatever. Those are very confusing terms, very useless to us. So if I'm given for Bureau X, for Bureau X, ladies and gentlemen, I can see the rate. I can see the rate there for Bureau X is 0 0.072, 0 0.08, yes. And then we have Bureau Y. Bureau Y, what do we have there, somebody? 0 0.09 to 0 0.1. Now, and remember that uh, these currencies, both of them have been given, if you look at that table very well up there, it's Kenya shillings per Tanzania shilling. It's Kenya shillings per Tanzania shilling. The same case with this other one. It's Kenya shilling per Tanzania shilling. From up there on that table, they have defined the currency for us. So ladies and gentlemen, where is the Kenya shilling? The Kenya shilling is on the left-hand side. If it is on the left-hand side, straight away I know that this is the buying rate of the bank or of the bureau. And then straight away, this will be the sell. The same with this. Other bureau, this is buy. And this is what, yes, somebody? This is sell. So remember that this investor has got what on him? He has 3 million Kenya shillings. So if he has 3 million Kenya shillings, 3 million Kenya shillings, what do you think will he do? Of course, he would want to buy their Tanzania shillings wants to exchange, to exploit. If it's an arbitrary, he wants to exploit. Now the question is, from which bureau do you think will this guy be better off buying the Tanzania shillings from? Is it Bureau X or Bureau Y? And why? Give us a reason. 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 I want to buy a Tanzania shilling. I've gone for quotations. Two bureaus have been able to give me their quotes. So the question is, where will I be better off? Should I buy this from X or I buy from Y? Most of them are saying Y, right? Or most of them are saying X. Ladies and gentlemen, if you look at this, Remember, the bank is the one that is buying at this rate. And then they sell at what year? 0 0.08. So for us, we behave in the opposite way. If the bank is saying sell, as we are saying buy as investors. So then this person will end up, if you are telling me it's X, this person will end up buying a Tanzania shilling at 0 0.08. If he goes to Y, he'll end up buying a Tanzania shilling at 0 0.1 what year? One. Remember the bank is the one that is selling there. But now these are the investors on the other side. He wants to get this Tanzania shilling. So they have given us the two quotes of uh, selling to us. The bank wants to sell, this X wants to sell to us at 0 0.08 and it wants, Y wants to sell to us at 0 0.1K. Ladies and gentlemen, this is expensive. So in short, we are saying there that uh, the investor, the investor, the investor will buy T shillings from X and they sell them and they sell them to Y. Because of the two locations, eh? because of the two locations, if you're buying from one, you must always sell to the other. You can't buy and sell to X, no, no, no. So here we have said because it is cheaper for him to buy from X, the investor will buy the Tanzania shillings from X and then sell them to Y. Sell them to Y. Sell them to Y. So, ladies and gentlemen, come and buy them. So, in this case, yeah, buy from X. So, buy from X. Could you kindly go ahead and exchange for us? Buy from X. Go ahead and exchange for, for us. Go ahead and exchange for us. 
Remember in this case here, the investor's buying rate, the investor's buying rate is 0 0.08 Kenya shillings per what? Per Tanzania shilling. This is the investor's buying rate. So go ahead and exchange. Of course, this being Kenya shilling and this being Kenya shilling, there is no way you expect us to multiply directly. So the only way out is to come and divide here. So you divide here by 0 0.08 Kenya shillings per Tanzania shilling, per Tanzania shilling. So if I do it this way, ladies and gentlemen, what will I end up getting? It will be 3 million divided by 0 0.08, which will end up giving us 37, 37, 500,000 cows. No, Kenya shillings and the Kenya shillings here will cancel out, leaving us with what here? Tanzania shillings. And then the same Tanzania shillings now you run with them to the next bureau and they sell them here. Sell them to Y. When I go to Y, I'll get a bank which has stated the terms. I'll get a bank saying, I want to buy the Tanzania shillings from you at this rate. So remember, the bank is buying as we are selling, as we are selling. So in this case here, sell, sell the investor. The investor will sell, the investor will sell the 37, the 37, 500,000 Tanzania shillings to why, to why, at what rate? At 0 0.09, at 0 0.09 Kenya shillings per Tanzania shilling. Kenya shillings per Tanzania shilling. So could you kindly go ahead and exchange for us? So to Y at 0 0.09 Kenya shillings per T shilling. So you can see that these are what here unlike term. They are unlike terms because these are Tanzania shillings and these are what here Kenya shillings. So if they're unlike terms, they can marry through multiplication, multiply them, multiply them. So when you multiply them, what will we end up getting, ladies and gentlemen, so times? 0 0.09, which will end up giving us 3,375,000. 3,375,000. Three and remember when I began the journey, I began with how much here? 3 million. I began with 3 million. I began with 3 million. So come and subtract your 3 million. You'll end up getting what year? 375,000. You'll end up getting 375,000. 300. And seventy five thousand three hundred and seventy five thousand. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this is a very serious topic that you're doing, and in most cases, I don't do it like triangulation, this concept of locational, I just don't do it in just a session like that. So, I've really tried, but uh, in our next session, I'll now be coming with uh, our uh, past paper questions on this area so that I can now challenge you to a level where you'll be able to tackle the question regardless of how the examiner tries to do what you have to twist it. I know because of what you have done here today, there are those students who may go uh, to their beds hating uh, me so much, saying that Mwalimu has taught us very bad things, so that we rub all that. I would want us now to summarize the whole thing using a simpler question now, using a simpler question, using a simpler question. A simpler question, if you could take me to uh, this ACCA book. These people normally copy the ACCA book. They normally copy the ACCA book quite a lot. The one that I had made when, eh? Just go to the next question. No, no, the other, the one that is on top. Just one, one more step, one more step here. Yes, Ziga Zigito, number one or two, Ziga Zigito, Ziga Zigito, Ziga Zigito, number one, zero, two, Ziga Zigito. So we are told there, Ziga Zigito, oh, you have to put it for them. Are they able to see it? So Ziga Zigito company is a medium sized company whose ordinary shares are owned by members of one family. The domestic currency is the dollar, 
Please read that and read that very well. The domestic currency is what year? The dollar. It has recently begun exporting to a European country and expects to receive euros 500,000 in six months time from now. The company plans to take action to hedge the exchange rate arising from the European exports. Zigazigito company could put cash on deposit in the European country at an annual interest rate of 3% per year and a borrow at 5% per year. The company could put cash on deposit in its home country at an annual interest rate of 4% per year and a borrow at 6% per year. Inflation in the European country is 3% per year, while inflation in the home country of Zigazigito is 4 So the moment they talk about inflation, inflation, I know I will be required to use the purchasing power parity model somewhere. So purchasing power parity will be required. So go to the next one, ladies and gentlemen. Next page. Next page. So next page. That one. They're telling us that eh, the following exchange rates are currently available to Zigazigito company. So they've given us current spot exchange rate. They've given us six months forward exchange rate. They've given us one year forward exchange rate. Like that one year forward exchange rate, honestly, is something they're putting there to confuse us because the amount of 500,000 euros that we expect will be coming to us in six months time, six months time. So it is not all the forward exchange rates that we shall be using. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you look at part B, I would want us to do part B, they want us to calculate the one year expected or future, the future spot rate predicted by the purchasing power parity theory and explain briefly the relationship between the expected future spot rate and the current forward exchange rate and the current forward exchange rate. So I would want to give you just one minute to try that question. I want to give you one minute to try that question. And of course, the very best thing you can do because it's triple P, you write down the formula and then you ask us to bring the question on your screen, to bring the question on your screen. Triple P, triple P. Fortunately, these are things that are very practical. Once you become a finance manager of a multinational company, these are the kind of things that we expect you to use, you to do at your workplace. These are the kind of languages which you would expect uh, to be hearing from you as a serious finance manager. So triple P. Once they ask you, give them the question with the, the values. Uh -huh. Caroline wants us to share the question on the group. Are we be able to do that? You can actually share the entire book with them. But now how do you share from here to, we have to, we can only do that later after the class. But for now, just pick the inflation rates given. For now, just pick the inflation rates given. Inflation rates given. I want you to take me to the inflation rate. It's here. So the inflation rates given, ladies and gentlemen, So perhaps you can uh, write for them. So scrolling totally. It wants us to go out and sleep. Eh? So Zigazigito, Zigazigito, just give me the inflation rate in this European country. In the European country, in the European country, I'm so sure you can see it uh, because you're down there. You can see it very easily. Ziga Zigito. Netwin. the other one. Uh, this one here. So go down a little bit. Mm -hmm. You can see it from here. 
Oops, one second. Okay. So we are told down here the inflation in the European country is three percent. So inflation, inflation in the European country, in the European country, they are telling us is three percent. And then we have inflation. We have inflation in the home country of Zigazigito. So inflation in the home country, home country of Zigazigito. When I say Manengapi, somebody. The 4.5 percent per year. It's 4.5 percent, 4.5 percent per year, 4.5 percent per year, 4.5 percent per year. Ah, ah. Now remember, the Gazigito, ladies and gentlemen, these are company which is making use of what the U.S. dollars, eh? Yeah. So if you go to the next uh, uh, table, you'll be able to see, ladies and gentlemen, a place where they are giving us, you'll be able to see a place where they are giving us the current spot exchange rate. The current spot exchange rate. So the current spot exchange rate, the current spot exchange rate is 2.0. The current export uh, or the spot exchange rate is 2.0, 2.0 US dollars, US dollars per what year per euro? 2.0 US dollars, US dollars. It is two euro, two euro per dollar, sorry. It is two euro, two euro, two euro per dollar. So they want you to use the purchasing power parity where we say that forward exchange rate equals spot exchange rate into one plus inflation rate country C, all over one plus inflation rate country B, country B. Therefore, our spot exchange rate here is two into one plus inflation rate of country C, country C, ladies and gentlemen, here is the Euro, European country should be up there because of the expression. So this is 3%, 3%, we need to prorate this figure in terms of number of months in terms of number of months, because 3% is an annual figure. And we are looking at six months. If you read the question very well, if you read the question very well, calculate, calculate, no, we're not supposed to prorate. They want us to calculate the one year expected spot rate. So don't prorate because it's one year. Don't prorate at all. So one plus 3% all over one plus, we have here 4.5% like that. So it goes slowly until you give us what year, the forward or future exchange rate. And then now you do part A and the part two at your own time, preferably before you sleep. So that uh, by tomorrow when we wake up, we should be able to get some people who have been, uh, uh, who have done the question, who have done that question. Otherwise, ladies and gentlemen, I can see time is not on our side. I know some of you would want to sleep because you would want to go uh, to work tomorrow. So I'll take this opportunity to thank you very much and apologize. Apologize. I'm so sure at the end of, of the day, we shall overcome. We shall overcome. I'm so sure you must have seen a few changes. The only challenge now we have is this number of uh, people exceeding 100. So you're able to lock away. You're able to lock away, ladies and gentlemen, those great students, bona fide students who have paid, eh? We lock them out. It is something we want to discuss with Dennis and then come up with what? Something we'll discuss with Dennis. So that's some, it's something we shall discuss with uh, Dennis and we shall be able to let you know of the way forward. Otherwise, for any communications, let us meet on our WhatsApp group and then we carry the debate on that group. Thank you very much. Good night. Be blessed.